whether it be into um, social services, whether it be into working for work, or, or going on to do a further degree. It's a regulated course, which means that the, um, we follow the instructions from SC, Person and Midwifery Council. We have made our course through UHI in partnership with NHS and various other organisations. And as much as we've contacted a number of organisations and asked them how we want these courses, how they want these courses to be run and what units that we put into these courses. The way the course works is that it's split into two semesters. So from um, September to January, you're given a number of units. And in these units, we are going to give you experience in things like leadership, um, care practice, health, well-being. Um, we talk about what we're going to do in the following semester with regards to how we're going to do optional units and, and various things to do with vocation. The whole course looks at three aspects of you. They, we look at your academic ability. We look at your vocational ability because we either have you on a um, placement, usually in semester two, which is about a 60 day placement. Or if you're working in health and social care at the moment, um, as long as you're doing more than 14 hours a week, we will allow you to use your work as the equivalent of your placement. So we look at how you're doing in your workplace and there's a vocational part of the course to cover that as well. We also look at your ability to work self-directed. In semester two, you get to do an optional unit and your optional units aren't lectured to you, if you like. You will work through your optional unit with guidance from various lecturers. In West Highland College, I am the sole lecturer for the whole of the course. So it's me that you're with for every single one of the units. And this year for the first time, um, I've also been having in to my West Highland College class, some of the Argyle um, students as well, some of the units, three of the units I do for both Argyle and West Highland College. The idea of this course is that it gets you ready for going to university or it gets you ready for that workplace um, role that you may be looking for or that you're currently in if you're looking to progress yourself in your current role. It allows you a greater understanding of certain things such as legislation, um, the way we do things, models and methods of working in care. So there'll be a number of times perhaps that you come on this course and you listen to myself or Alan talk about certain things with regards to the principles of care practice. And you might actually even not quite understand sometimes straight away what we're talking about. But then when you're in practice or on your placement, you'll suddenly go, that's what Andy was talking about. or That's what Alan was talking about. And you can relate the theory to practice. The whole idea of this course is that you can then go and work in a ward or work in a, a care home or um, work with someone with additional support needs and understand the theory behind what we do in care. My background is I've worked for a, a number of years in health and social care. And before I came to the college five years ago, I was a community nurse for learning disabilities. So I'm able to um, help my students relate some of the stuff that I'm talking about by using some examples um, in practice. That I've experienced or that others have experienced with me. And that's really what this course is. This course is a gateway course, if you like. It allows you to use this course to build up your academic ability. You're assessed purely by essay um, and a couple of other little tasks that we'll ask you to do as we go through. And the way it works is that you'll get a number of units in semester one, and then, and Fiona's experienced this, and she'll talk about this in a wee while, you'll get an essay to do based on the learning that you've had. And then you'll submit that essay. When you've achieved that, you move on to the next one and then the next one. And we find a number of students have come to us and, and they've never written essays for years. They're, they're maybe mature students and they've not written essays for years. But Alan and I's job is not just to help you get through this course, but also to perhaps prepare you for a, a university degree. So you're not just learning about care and social services, you're learning how to write academically. And what we tend to find is once folk have done the HNC and then perhaps move on to university, they're already at the academic level that they should be at because this is a level seven course. 
And so when they go to their first year of university, all they're doing is learning the facts. They're not having to worry about how do I write essays? How do I reference? So there's a number of things from this course that you'll achieve, not just the learning and not just the experience and not just the information about care and all the things you need to know about why we do certain things with individuals that require care. You'll also learn these academic skills that will help you when you go to university. But again, a number of our students don't go to university straight after this. They'll go and, and work in care or they'll gain more experience to help them perhaps get a promotion in the job that they're currently in because the HNC will help them do that and help them get registered with the SSSC. So again, it's helping you build your experience and build your knowledge and, as I said before, relate theory practice. If you've got no experience in care, this is a good course to come to because this is going to gain you that experience whilst learning. If you've got a lot of experience in care and you need that qualification to register, then it's going to help you that way as well. So basically, whether you've got absolutely no experience and you're wishing to change your career or start a career in care, or whether you feel that you have got a lot of experience but you want to gain that qualification to move further, this kind of tends to be the course for you. We've found over the last few years, numbers are rising um, dramatically and numbers are, are, are already um, applications are quite high for um, West Highland College at the moment, um, just purely because of the fact that so many folk have done the course, mentioned it to their colleagues and have now moved on and their colleagues are coming now to do this course as well. And that's just a wee potted description of what we do and why we do this course. What I'd like to do is um, pass on to Alan and he'll tell you a bit about the vocational side of this course and why we do the vocational side of it, which is the SVQ side of the course, um, which you tend to do um, right the way through, but particularly in the second half of the course. So, Alan, I'll pass you on to you. Just to say before I pass on, Alan, if anyone's got any questions, once Fiona spoke, we'll, we'll open the, the, the floor um, to any questions that you have. I just want to make this quite informal and, and relaxed, and you can just chat away and ask us some questions. So, Alan, I'll pass on to you. You want to talk about your bit? Yeah, thanks very much, Andy. Um, let, let me introduce myself to you. Um, my name's Alan McDougall. Um, I'm the lecturer at our Argyle College. I'm based in North Gilpid College, uh, although my roles include most of the college centres throughout Argyle. Um, my main focus uh, of support is uh, with vocational qualifications. That's the qualifications um, where students, candidates are actually practically working in the care field. Um, and as, as I say, it's my uh, uh, privilege to, to support the students uh, in, in the care field. Um, just a couple of things to add to what Andy was saying there, that um, uh, the HNC course is actually de is delivered full time, but it can also be offered on a part time basis as well over a two year period, and that sometimes suits um, um, uh, students who are uh, got a large workload, a family life situation, what have you. So you can do it part time as well. Um, Andy was saying that you know, he he delivers the course fully to the the, the students at the West Highland College. Um, it's slightly different in Argyle College, um, in as much yes we have specific tutors for specific subjects, but there's a, a lot of other of the the, the mandatory uh, subjects and some of the optional uh, subjects that we actually get tutors from the other colleges within the UHI to deliver uh, to the students. So that uh, we ensure that our uh, our students um, uh, have the best uh, of, of of all worlds. They get, they get um, uh, supported locally, but they can also they also get the tutors from across the UHI network. Um, as far as the SVQs are concerned, um, we support the students locally. Uh, myself and uh, my my colleague um, uh, throughout Argyll. SVQs are slightly different um, to the normal qualification. As part of the HNC uh, qualification, you are required to undertake three SVQ units. 
uh, some of the sort of core units associated with care work. Um, and that includes communication, health and safety, and reflecting on your knowledge and practice. Um, they, they, as I say, these are core units, and um, throughout your HNC studies, the, the academic side, you will be evidencing some aspects of that. Um, but the good part of the SVQs, you can only evidence through your practice, through your actual hands-on support of individuals, whether that's in a hospital environment, a care in the community, housing support, uh, or care for the elderly. Um, and the SVQs are uh, slightly different to the normal academic qualifications. Um, I was speaking to a uh, uh, a potential student for the SVQ, uh, the SVQ course earlier today, um, and I was explaining to, to them that uh, when you're at school, you get your standard grades, you get your hires to enable you to get a job or to progress to college uh, or university. When you're at college or university, you get a qualification to get a job uh, or gain employment. The SVQs are slightly different uh, in as much that um, and uh, you actually get employment and then you get the qualification for it. Um, academic uh, qualifications, you tend to do a lot of research, um, a lot of reading, uh, and then you write about it. SVQs are about reflecting on your experience and reflecting on your support of individuals and writing that to a specific standard. So that's a slight uh, twist in evidencing the SVQ aspect of it. Um, but um, the, whole, the whole uniqueness of this particular course is the marrying together of the HNC units, the academic side of things with the practical side of things. And when you marry the two together, it is a unique qualification. It's a qualification that um, uh, employers look extremely positively on because it has that practical element within it. You have shown, if you complete the qualification, uh, your competency and uh, how capable you are working in that particular field. And that is a huge boon, a huge positive for potential employers. Uh, also, if you want to go on, um, as Andy quite eloquently said, it is a gateway qualification as well. Um, and you can progress to a degree course, to nursing, to social work. Um, if you want to go into um, other emergency services like ambulances and, uh, and or addiction services, anything like that, this course is um, a fabulous gateway to, to these qualifications to that type of employment. Um, as Andy was also saying that the SVQ is certainly a focus and would be a focus in your second semester. So from sort of January to, to June. Um, and uh, through that period, we would be giving you um, um, regular support to get you through, uh, to support you through the SVQ. We have, as a team, as an HNC team, we've already uh, looked at the HNC, the academic uh, modules and the SVQ modules, and we've already mapped evidencing uh, be between the two different types of qualification. So um, uh, we will be focusing on the areas that you haven't been covered, that haven't been covered through the academic side of things. Um, I don't really think there's much more I can say uh, as far as the, the that call of the, the, the SVQ is concerned. Um, and again, as Andy is saying and um, the, the other participants, if you've got any questions at all about that, then don't hesitate to put something down in the chat or you, know, you know, come to us in the question and answer session that we'll be uh, having uh, in a short while. Um, I'm going to hand over to, to Fiona. Um, she, she will be able to introduce herself quite eloquently as well. 
But Fiona is a current student based in uh, La Gilbert, um, and she is undertaking the, this particular course, and she can explain um, how that has impacted on her. Fiona, take it away, girl. Thanks, Alan. Um, yeah, so as Alan says, um, I'm based in Loch Gilpid. I work in a care at home service out in the community. Recently new to um, to care practice, um, having come from a food and beverage background, and I kind of decided at the age of thirty something or other that um, I wanted to change my career, and I wanted to do something completely and utterly different. And I had half my life, half my working life left. So I wanted to retrain, um, and I decided that you know, no experience, care was what I was going to go and do, and I pushed myself at every opportunity. Um, I started out doing the SVP level two with um, Alan and the other lecturer, and then once that was completed, I found myself looking for something else, um, and it was actually Alan's um, colleague that put me in touch with. Um, the access to nursing course, which I applied for, but I was kind of swithering because I'm a single parent and I've got to work. So I was kind of like, how am I going to, okay, I can do the access to nursing course, but how am I going to juggle my life around that? And it was a full time course and I kind of applied, but my heart wasn't really in it. Um, and one of the girls in the office at Regal College suggested that I apply to this course. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'll go for that. Um, and very soon after the interview, I realised that this was the course that was for me. That was exactly what I wanted to do. It gave me lots more options on where I wanted to go. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get to university to do nursing when I finished this course, or whether or not I'd have to do another distance learning course. Um, obviously, being a wee bit older um, and having been out of school for you know, twenty odd years, um, <laughs> do you know, I'm kind of a bit nervous. Because it's a new, it's a new structure. It's a new learning environment. Um, what I would say is, my niece is also doing a similar course, and she's not so long out of school, and she's found it very, very difficult to do all this online stuff. For me, it's natural because I haven't done any education for twenty years, so this is the only way I know how to do my teaching. You know, this is the only way I know how to do my learning now is on a computer. <laughs> learning through you know, video calls and rather than in a classroom, this is the only way I know how to do it. I know that that's hopefully going to be changing, you know, with, with the regulations getting lifted and things like that. We'll be able to get back into the classroom um, environment at Gail College. But, you know, don't be scared of the technology because it's the future. <laughs> and that's kind of where we need to work to. And I hope you don't mind me saying I did notice there was a few people that were a wee bit kind of mature, as in, Kind of my age as well, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I thought I'd kind of. It's nice to see that, um, you know, you're not kind of being faced with somebody so young and going, "Yeah, it's great," and it's a student life. This is a, this is um, this is a career for us. You know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Didn't it's actually. a wee bit worrying. It's a wee bit worrying for me and Alan when you're considering yourself to be mature. I don't know where me and Alan fit into that, but, but anyway, um, and I can't see the faces of other people, so we'll just have to assume we're all mature. Fiona, can I just ask you a question? Obviously, I, I, I and just just for, for anyone that doesn't know, it, this isn't a setup, and Fiona is one of my students in a couple of the units, um, yeah. or was during semester one. But I'm going to ask Fiona a couple of questions, just that, that you might want. To with one day to go, I might like to add as well, and ten minutes to go that I was going to have to speak. So Absolutely. Just... <laughs> yeah. um, Fiona, go and do me a favour and mute your mic just one second while I ask you the question, so I don't hear my own voice. Um, Fiona, you mentioned the, the type of um, the, this, this delivery the, uh, for everybody that doesn't know. Just just what what happened um, because of the COVID situation? The, 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 not this year's class, but last year's class. They were all almost all face to face. And what happened in West Island College was we had a class in the college building and my so my students were in front of me in, in from Fort William, but anybody from Malig, um, Portree, wherever, Alapool, they would video call into my class. So I'm delivering to my class and to them on the screen. And what I would do is once, twice, maybe sometimes three times a year, I'd go and visit them up in their centres. 
Um, obviously, last year when all this happened, everybody had to be from home. And so this year we took the decision that right from the start, we were going to deliver the whole course. So this whole course, um, this whole year's course is being delivered from my house to their house, effectively, in, in the same way Alan. We don't know what's going to happen next year, obviously. <laughs> I would imagine there'll be a blend, perhaps, of both, because it worked. It, re it really, really worked. Um, to the point that um, I'm now in the situation of a class of 17, where I'm going to have 10 people going and doing their nursing degree um, next year. Out of that 17, I've got two going and doing social work and one going and doing mental health. So it's obviously worked, and that was an extreme worry, and I'm sure that was for Alan as well, although we've not talked about it. It was an extreme worry as to what was going to happen and how these guys were going to progress. So we know that our deliveries worked, and the fact that both um, Alan's college and my college deliver to remote and rural students um, all over the place, it, it, our system has worked. And so as Fiona says, that's what we're going to do. So the question I was going to ask, Fiona, you mentioned the, the fact that this was the only thing you were used to. Do you want to just say a couple of positives and negatives about that? Because let's be honest, I, I want everybody to be aware of both the ups and downs of this. This is not, if this course was going to be easy, you get it in a kinder egg. We do, it's not, it's not easy, all right? You, you need to work at this course. So how have you found it both positively and negatively with the type of learning you're doing, Fiona? Being someone at home, it's a single mum, being someone at works, how are you juggling it? How, how did you find that, if you don't mind me? Uh, time management's key, absolutely. I drafted up and photocopied little timetables. And I can show you them actually, right? I don't use them so much now because I'm into a routine. But right at the start, I'd made up a timetable. And on that timetable, on a Sunday, I would sit down and I would put my class times in and I would put my times for housework and I would put my times for work work and I would put everything right down to when I was having a gin. Right, that went on the timetable because I knew I couldn't have a gin if I was working the next morning or whatever like that. So I had this all scheduled out. Um, so organizing your time and fitting it in around everything else you've got to do is key. I'm enjoying th this way because I'm not. I'm at home. I've got a teenage boy. Um, I can get up and cook him a meal and come back and do a bit of studying. Um. I can drop into a class and then take 10 minutes out after the class to unload the washing machine and, and hang up a washing and things like that. It's not the full day that's taken away from me. The downside is that my house needs to be clean every time that I go on camera. <laughs> Do you know? Um, sometimes the connection's not so good. My laptop's outdated, absolutely. Um, so having to mute mics and things like that whenever I'm whenever I'm not speaking around or people get feedback, do you know? So it can be a wee bit kind of awkward, but the lectures are really, really good. I mean, the other week I had a problem dog with all the storms and um, Sylvia and I, Sylvia's doing my VQ units. Um, we couldn't get the connection right. So she just phoned me and we just did it over the phone and we discussed it over the phone. I had my laptop there, she had hers and we just discussed it over the phone. So there's always a way to work it out, do you know? I think that's an important point, and, and to to talk about your negatives there. If your house is dirty, you only need to clean one corner, Fiona. Right? You don't need to clean the whole thing; it's just that one corner you need to clean. This is something again, um, just to, to let you guys know. I don't know where your locations are, so um, I'm just going to speak for everybody in a sense. But no matter where you are, we make that effort to to, to make you feel part of the class. Um, even if you're all sitting in your home, and this was again something that we were worried about this year, that the, the social aspect of college or university, because it is a university course, but um, the social aspect wasn't there because of lockdown. And if we go to a blended or we go back to where we were before, or we decide that we're going to do it all by VC, whatever, it's our job, um, Alan's job, my job, and everybody else in our teams, and, and everybody that's sitting here um, as part of the college network, to make you feel part of a class. The, the phrase that I've used every single year, and it's usually not until they leave that my students remember it, is that we all come together as dysfunctional individuals and we all leave as a dysfunctional family. And every year that's happened. Um, no, and even last year when the guys had half their course in lockdown, and this year, um, it's probably been my best class, to be perfectly honest with you, from, from that togetherness that we've gone through. 
you, wherever you are, there's a very good chance that you're going to end up working with, and in some cases you might already work with, some of the people on your course. And that's part of what Alan and I deliver. We deliver the importance of teamwork. We deliver the importance of um, sharing best practice. And in care, that is number one. I manage care teams. And so that was always the most important thing. And so that's what we try and bring into our classes, that you are understanding of each other. Yes, it's your name on the certificate at the end of the day, and it's you that needs to put the work in, but that it is a whole team thing. And when Fiona's talking about technology problems and stuff like that, that's what we want to do. We want to try and make sure that we're there for you. Um, as course leader, I, I'm, I'm there for everybody because I'm also their personal academic tutor. And um, so if you have personal issues, it's me that you would come to and I would put you to the right people. Um, so I'm glad Fiona said that. This this course tends to, like I say, turn everybody into a little bit of a group that follows each other for years. This is now my fifth class, I think I'm right in saying. Um, and every year I see this more and more that the classes keep in touch after they've left college. They share information when they become professionals. They're graduating now from nursing degrees and they're, they're, they're still communicating with each other and sharing information, which is what we're trying to instill right at the very, very start of this course. Um, that's a bit preachy, but there you go. This is my job. Fiona, um, is there anything else you were wanting to say? Okay. I started my optional unit, which as Alan explained was, um, it's all, or Andy explained rather, that's all done um, self-directed. Um, and the optional unit that I was on was also a girl that was in my class that I did with Andy. So it's somebody that I've never met, somebody that we only really interact through Andy's screen, do you know? Um, and she happened to be on this optional course. And the two of us were the only two that knew each other in this optional course. So we've kind of linked up on Facebook and we exchange, do you know what the hell's going on with this assessment? Do you know, do you know what's going on? And God, we wish we had Andy back. <laughs> so we do have actually said that, Andy, just give me a thumbs up there. But do you know, things like that. Um, so there is that whole gel that comes on with the with the um the the, the, the the kind of group that you have there. So Andy's right. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, you're right, Andy. How did that happen? Yeah, I know. Scandalous. Right, listen, guys, that's half of this scheduled hour. And what I've already said to Sophie and Vanessa was that Alan, me and Fiona were going to talk for half an hour, and then I hoped that you guys would start asking questions.